chirping from the pine. It's time to rage. Welcome all to episode number five. This is it, buddy. Oh, I mean, this is not it. This is going to be over. This this is it that we're putting it out now. What has been months and months in the making to finally get to five fucking episodes so we can put out this goddamn podcast. Most people will probably listen to this the first That's the first episode because it's going to be at the top of the list. So to all you new listeners out there, welcome to chirping from the pine, the Game Rage Magazine Sports Podcast. I'm Josh, and I'm here today with good buddy Adam. Yes, hello, it's me, Adam. <laughs> yes, hello, it's me, Adam. Excellent. So before we get into business today, which, which oh, we do have some business to get into today, let's talk about real quick how you can uh, you know help us out and listen to. I mean, really, you're not even helping us out. You're just helping yourself out. Uh, you can go to GameRageMagazine.com and you can listen to all of our fucking multitude of podcasts. All Gas, No Trash, the music one. Anime Syndicate, all about anime. CUP, the Geopolitics and Current Events podcast. Uh, movies and TV, Game Rage Movies TV, which is about, obviously, movies and TV. We're doing, we just got done with the show Shogun. Now we're doing X-Men 97. We're also going to be doing Fallout as well. So stay tuned for that. Game Rage Wrestling, if you like pro wrestling, which is for sure sports adjacent adjacent, because as we all know, it is sports entertainment. Oh, shit. Hold on. All right. Sorry. Go ahead. As we all know, it's sports entertainment. The numbers don't lie. Indeed, they do not. So go and listen to all those. Oh, also without censor, the. Game Rage Interview Podcast, which has a multitude of bangers. We are hopefully going to, I don't want to say the word con, but you know, um, you got to give us a shot. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to, hopefully someone's going to give us a shot sports related and they're going to be on. And I'm going to tell you right now for the, for the, the CFTP faithful out there. We will tell you who it is when we get there. Once we have them on, we will say who it is. God damn, that is a mouthful to say, to, to do the acronym, because it doesn't <laughs> quite ring us no. nicely. And when you, you're CFP. <laughs> also, I was reading it off of the fucking board because I couldn't remember. I started doing it in my head. I'm like chirping for C. And I was like, oh, wait, it's on the board halfway through that. And I was like, CF. And then I, and then I saw CUP right above it. And I said, oh, wait, that's the wrong one. Shit. And so. That's why that sounded weird. But yeah, CFTP, the C, the cuffed p- faith, cuffed. P- wait, that, that, that doesn't work. God damn it. Anyways, check out all our shit, GameRageMagazine.com. You'll fucking enjoy it and have a great time. So here we are today. Adam, you had some things you said you wanted to discuss. Let's talk about it. Yeah, uh, it's been rather interesting this last couple of weeks as far as the sports world goes especially here locally in southern california as i came to find out that the local high school team in which both josh and i attended corona high school the baseball team has reformed to be one of the juggernauts in the entire country which is really fucking surprising And in fact, they will be playing the first round of the CIF playoffs against. uh, Let me just look at it real quickly. Against a team named the. Actually, I don't know the team name, but it's the Eldorado High School. They'll be playing them in the first round at Corona High, which is uh, really cool to see because for the longest time, baseball was not one of the finer programs at corona high so shout outs to them i might actually go to this fucking game because i i'm curious to see if we can end up going to the state championship and 
I don't know what what else happens after that, but one other thing I had to know is that this team ended up winning the National High School Invitational across many teams from the United States. They were number one. The numbers don't lie. Indeed, the numbers don't. And I will say this now. Yes, I did play there. I played on baseball, the baseball team when I was in high school, as we've talked about before at Corona High. Will I be going to these? Uh, oh, good. Why don't you tell us about your experiences, Josh? Oh, you, you want to know about my experiences, huh? Oh, man. How much time you got, buddy? Um, Go make, make it happen. I want I, <laughs> this is your time to purge all the demons. All the past history, you, you, hey, you know, what's funny. So the, the guy who we're, who we're reaching out to, to try to get on an interview, he is a guy I played with as when we were kids and also at Corona high. And I'm not going to say his name, but cause I, you know, we'd like him to come on. So you'll know obviously if it's, if it's him or not, but, uh, <laughs> he's, he's also one of the coaches now at uh, Corona high. So it's interesting that, that he went from, doing that to now essentially being a coach on the number two or number one, or the number one in the nation or number two in the nation. Who's that? A uh, Corona high, the, the Corona high, the baseball program. They are number two currently, but they, they flopped between going, you know, four to number one. They had a few losses, but uh, yeah, they are, I think currently ranked number two in the nation behind, uh, I forgot who the number team, the number one team is, but as far as I can remember, they're still number two. Yeah. And I will say, have I, I don't know. Have I talked about this before on here? I'm trying to think about it. Maybe I'm not sure. I don't think you have actually. All right. Well, whatever. Like you said, most people are probably going to listen to this as the first episode anyway. And (laughs) maybe they won't go back and listen to the other ones. I don't know, but whatever this will probably be the first time you're hearing me talk about this shit anyway so yeah so like i i played i played there i played baseball and did did i and this kind of goes with what we were going to talk about a little bit later because we're also going to talk about travel sports in general and so i guess we'll just fucking kind of get into that now because this kind of go well i'll talk about that first but this this kind of goes along with that and and like at the time man i already was kind of done burned out of playing fucking baseball and and going into this high school endeavor and then to be fucking saddled with the additional baggage of of the hatred of my family and my uh that my father brought upon me from our old days playing travel baseball and in little league and whatnot um to have that come back and and kind of essentially shape the narrative of of what my the rest of my baseball quote unquote career ended up looking like it kind of fucking sucks because yeah I played with several guys like I'm not gonna fucking name names at the moment but I did play with several guys who went on to get drafted and you know some of some of them even went on to win fucking multiple World Series is 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 I don't know if that's how you say that, but I could have potentially I think I could have maybe been maybe not up there, but I could have at least had a better shot if I didn't have these these outstanding issues with the with the coat with, with the with the head coach at the time that I was there. And it's a funny story. I mean, it's funny now looking back on it, but you know, uh, when I played sports, my dad did never, he never coached me. Right. Except for two years. And there was two years when we played little league He coached me. I think I might've said this a little bit on another one of the episodes, but I'll just rehash it again real quick. He coached me for two seasons. And that was because no other fucking buddy, nobody was going to coach the team. Cause they decided that, that this guy who was the coach when we, we started the season, he quit after like two weeks and they were going to just disband our team and like we weren't even going to get to play. They weren't even going to put us on other t- or they were going to let the other teams have their pick of who they wanted. But it, it wasn't going to be everybody was going to get picked. So if you didn't get picked, then you just didn't, you didn't get to play that year. And so or one of the parents could have came on and coached the team. So my dad fuck, said, fuck it. I'll just I'll do it because otherwise they're not going to get to play. 
or not everybody's gonna get to play and that's fucked up so he, he went ahead and he took took the role and took the team well the guy who was the head coach of uh corona high when i attended there he was a coach of the rival baseball team in the little league he, it was like the team that ran the show they they fucking they worked everybody and i ended up when i went into that uh league you had to, you had to try out in, in that little league and so uh i i tried out and the goal was is that i was going to try to get on a team i was going to do bad so that i could get on and i've tried this multiple times and it never worked but i <laughs> i was going to do bad in the tryout so that way the teams that were the higher level teams that knew that I was pretty good. They wanted to pick me, but they were essentially dead, dead last or, or close to dead last in the first round of, of draft picks. So I would definitely get scooped up by one of the other teams. So I try, I, I tried to do bad and still ended up getting taken first fucking round uh, out of everything. So I got put on the worst fucking team, which whatever, I don't give a shit. That's fine. I just wanted to play. So, but as this happened where this coach drafted me and then I ended up on this team, this other coach who was the coach of uh he was, who was the coach at corona high he had this team and basically they were the running the show they were they were the the end all be all they whooped everybody's asses no problems so uh basically my dad took us and turned us into uh, he took this ragtag group of of shitheads that that were were just kind of okay and uh you know he, he turned us into a baseball team and we ended up winning the league two years in a row we won the league that first time around, and this guy who was the coach, uh, we'll just call him uh, call him Dave. All right, we'll, we'll refer to him as, as Coach Dave. Okay, this is the guy who coached at Corona High when I was there, and also was the rival coach to to my dad in the, in the little league thing. So, uh, Coach Coach Dave, he uh, he fucking hated my dad. They fucking hated each other, and it was because my dad came in whooped everybody's ass. We, we came in somehow. We whooped everybody's ass with the worst team, literally the worst team in the league, turned it around and started whooping asses. And when that happened, when you win the league, you get to be the coach of the all-star team. And so it was basically a very political deal where, oh yeah, like the last two years, whoever wins the league the last two years, oh, those, you the, the coach that wins, he picks the last two year team uh, assist as the assistant coaches. He basically takes the head coaches of the two teams that either came in like second or third or that won the two years previously the league. They will take them on as the assistant coaches and then they'll take kids from there. Now, this guy, Coach, Coach Dave, he had his son playing and this is the reason why he and this is why I'm not going to say what his real name is because I'm going to be very insulting in this. Uh, he his kid wasn't that good. His kid was a, I don't even want to say mediocre at, I mean, maybe at best mediocre at playing baseball. This kid was not that good. And this kid would have realistically never gotten decent playing time on a good team unless his dad was the coach. So that's why his dad coached the team. Additionally, when, when this guy went to high school, his his coach, coach Dave became the head coach coach of the baseball program just so his kid could play on varsity all four years that was the only reason because as soon as his kid was done he quit he bounced out as soon as his kid graduated he quit coaching baseball so it's clearly obvious that was the only intention that he had of of getting himself into that role was so that his kid could play varsity all four years, just like he had done for this kid basically his entire life. Sure. Now, me being a father now, I can see the value in that. I can see the reason why of doing that. I think that's not good because then it, you give this kid an inflated sense of whether they're good or not. And they become like the typical coach's kid attitude where go ahead. This this is what I'm discovering well, I mean, much much like any environment, right? There's politicking done. And I don't think sports is any exception where you have the coach's kid or you try to get you, you can't defend nepotism and you can't promote politicking either. But in some cases, man, as a parent, you kind of you kind of want to fight for your kid because everybody else is trying to get the one up to get their kid on a team or whatever. 
So you kind of have to. If you just sit back and have everything based on merit, it ain't going to happen, dude. Your kid is not going to play. So you kind of have to play the fucking game. And maybe that's where you fell victim to is that much like a work environment or anything else, there's politics involved. Yeah, exactly. And so one of the things that 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 ended up happening because of this was was my dad didn't play the politics game. Right. And this is probably the reason why I don't like playing the politics game. I think it should just be based on merit. If you're the best person for this position, you are going to play. That's how it's going to be. Everyone else is going to get the league, the game minimum, which the, the game minimum was you either got to play two innings or have one at bat. OK, that was the minimum at the time, every kid on the team, if you showed up for a game, you were going to get to play at least two innings or one at bat. And so if you're a shitty player, you're going to get your two innings or your one at bat, and that's it. That's all you're going to get because we're out here trying to fucking win, right? So my dad took that attitude, and so that turned it into the team was de- it was really good. It was just horribly managed. It was just completely mismanaged. So... Also, I also got to see people that are parents trying to suck ass to my to my dad to be like, oh, to try to get their kid more playing time. And so my dad became hated throughout the league because word got around that, oh, you can't just kiss his ass like every other coach loves that loves to do and and get your kid more playing time. So. He was hated throughout the league and developed this this rivalry with this other with with coach coach Dave. Uh, because when it came to be all star time, he said that it didn't matter the other kids in the league because every single other coach and every single other player constantly berated us and talked shit about us about how we were the worst team in the league the year prior. Which really, there was me and like three or four other kids were the new draftees, I guess, on the on the team. So because of all that, he said, you know what? When we go to the all star deal, I'm taking maybe like. One kid, because we had we had a couple extra roster slots, but I'll, I'll, t- I'll give him this, man. He took every single kid from our team, even the bad ones. And when you play in All-Stars, it's supposed to be a conglomeration of every team, right? It's the best players of every team in your league. That's kind of what it is. And so when you win the league, you get to coach the team, the thing. So my dad said, no, I ain't fucking taking any of these other coaches. And dude, trust me, as soon as they saw it was imminent that we were going to be the number one team in the league, they the the politicking began and this is where my dad got into the hatred with some of the other coaches because he said no i'm not taking your kid just because you want to fucking do this i'm going to take every single kid on this all-star team because the ones that are bad they still contributed to get here and there's no none of you other assholes are ever going to take them for an all-star team. pg brother (laughs) so yeah you're right with kids it should be pg so so he said no I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take all these kids, give them a shot so they can at least play on this all-star team this year. And then sure. I, I need to fill out, I think two more roster spots. So I'll take fucking one kid over here who he liked that thought was really good. He took another kid and then that was it. And we went to the all-stars and you know, fucking yeah, we didn't do so great, but I mean, we did all right. We got, I think we got past the first round that first year. Um, and then cool. Second year, same deal. We win the league again. This 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 hatred between coach Dave and my dad just just continues to get worse and worse. And so then when it comes time later down the line to go to high school, uh, Corona High had I was slated to go to another high school in in the zone that I was in. And so I ended up going to Corona High because that was where the majority of the guys that I had played with uh, growing up, that's where they were going, the majority of them. And so. We kind of just said, OK, if we can get all most of us together, then we should have a pretty good shot of being a really good high school team, thus elevating our selves in the limelight to be seen by scouts, to be seen by whatever. Right. In theory. So we get there and obviously uh, I go to do the tryout and Coach Dave is basically just like, oh, this motherfucker is never going to see the light of day on on varsity. So I was a freshman. Sure, I wasn't expecting to get put up on varsity. However, to add insult to injury, which I felt this was an intentional move, he cuz cuz I played me and this other kid got to play on the summer team the league before when we were in 8th grade. We were 8th grade going into ninth grade. We played on the summer team. And so the assistant coaches 
they took the summer team and and ran it. So we got to play. Now, granted, we were both catchers. This kid was basically my backup the entire time we played up until this point. And so we were just like bullpen catchers, for lack of a better term. But we got to kind of learn how they run the game, like how it's played here at this level. And so it was a really good experience. It was great. And we learned a lot. Well, to add insult to injury, he takes this kid up to varsity freshman year. The kid, the guy who's been my backup for years, takes him up there and just essentially turns him into a, a bullpen catcher. Never plays, never sees the light of day, but he takes him. I no varsity doesn't want you. So I got to play on the freshman team, which was what I was expecting anyways, play on the freshman team. So me and, and this guy that we're trying to interview, he was also on the freshman team. We basically went, I think, 19 and one or 20 and no. I can't remember because this was like fucking 20 years ago. Fucking I've probably even longer than that now. But we did really great. And when we all moved up to JV, same deal. We did really great. We went like 19 and one or 20. And 0. it was fucking we lost very little games. So the, the theory being when we all get up to varsity with all of the classmen that are around with us, we should be whooping everybody's ass because we're whooping everybody's ass in freshman and JV, right? So that's the theory. So if you have that, and and now granted, Corona High baseball at that time in the 2000s, the early 2000s was doing dog shit at the varsity level, was fucking dead last in, in everything. And they were doing very poorly. So you would think, hey, if you have an opportunity where you now have a group of people that are eligible up to play on varsity that have gone through the system, they've proven themselves. Hey, this group, they can do this, this and this. Okay, cool. We'll bring them up to varsity and we should play them. Well, we go up to varsity and what happens? We all just end up fucking basically sitting the bench because, well, fucking (laughs) why, why would we any of us get to play? And so I had had a conversation because the guy that they were playing in both of the positions that I played were both garbage and couldn't hit for shit and garbage. So I just had a conversation saying, hey, to, to one of the assistant coaches who I you know looked at as like a mentor um, and the other quote unquote assistant coach who used to be the head coach of the team. I, I looked at them as mentors and I asked them, I said, hey, what do you guys think here? I, I, I bust my ass. I fucking do all this work and. I'm better than these dudes, but. Coach Dave is literally just telling me to go fuck myself because he doesn't like me because of these past issues that have happened with my dad and like nothing to do with me. I never did nothing to him, but he's taken out this fucking petty grudge against me. Technically still a child, not 18, not an adult taking it out on me and saying, hey, you're never going to fuck it. So they told me, hey, why don't you just go have another conversation with him just to see what he says? I said, all right. So I have the conversation with with old coach, coach Dave, and he, he basically tells me, he says, Josh, you're never going to get to play. As long as I am coach here, you will sit in the bullpen and you will do nothing. If someone gets hurt at one of the positions there or anywhere, I'm going to pick. I'll bring someone up from JV. Hell, I'll bring someone up from freshman before I let you get on the field. And I said, OK, well, that's fucking copy that message received. PG, brother. Message received. That this is how it's going to be. And I'm not going to ever get to play. Now, you you factor in that I'm a young, I'm a, I'm a young man at this point, right? You know, I'm like 16, whatever, 17 years old. And there's a lot of fucking testosterone and a lot of fucking hormones and shit going on. And you couple that with the fact that. I, I don't know what your experience was, but, but my experience in sports was at at. at that time at, at our high school was uh, there was a lot of drugs. There was a lot of drinking. There was a lot of, you know, there was just a lot of bad shit going on with that. And I generally stayed out of it. But, you know, you're trying to deal with all this shit. And then you get told that basically putting up with all this horse shit, you're still just not going to get to fucking play. That you're just th- that all this shit you're doing is worthless. So I said, you know what? It's time to make a decision because I'm not just going to sit here and fuck off and do nothing. I, I might as well just not even. Why am I bothering to show up to this shit? So I said, fuck it. I, I, I said, I'm going to I'm going to end this on my terms. And I'm not going to let anyone else decide my fate for me. I'm going to I'm going to choose my own fate. So, yeah, I chose to fucking just bounce. I quit. I said, fuck this. I'm out. And now looking back. I probably wouldn't have made that same decision with everything that I know now. Right. Probably wouldn't have done that. Probably would have just stuck it out because 
again, I was young. I'm an idiot. You know, fucking this was like the one thing that I actually got to decide when it came to my baseball career. And basically leading into this entire thing, I had basically played baseball every weekend for fucking like a decade prior to this. And I finally just said, shit, man. This is the one choice that I get to make as to whether I keep doing this because no one can tell me what to do with this. I'm the only one. I'm the master of my own destiny here. And I chose to fucking stop doing it. And again, do I regret it? No, I don't regret it. It was it was liberating. It was. It was one of the best feelings I've ever had. Because I actually had a say in what I was doing. And what I mean by that is, you know, when you when you do something like this, when you play a sport and you're trying to get to the highest level of it. You have to play all the time, right? And by the nature of what we were doing when we were pl- playing travel baseball, when we were, you know, basically seven through 17 for, for lack of a better time, you're playing every weekend. You're playing all the time, nonstop, every holiday, Memorial Day. There's a baseball tournament. Arbor Day. There's a tournament. Uh, Cesar Chavez Day. There's a tournament. Columbus Day. There's a tournament. Uh, fucking any any holiday, any stupid holiday you can imagine. There's a baseball tournament for it. And we were there playing at it and when you don't have a choice in the matter and and you're a kid and you just want to be a kid you just want to be a kid you just want to fuck around with your friends you want to play video games you want to go do hood rat shit like you know you just want to be a kid but you're being pushed to do to spend all of your free time doing this yeah you're gonna get good at it that's just the bottom line doesn't matter if you're shitty or not if you spend as many hours as i did playing baseball as a kid you're going to be good. You're going to get good at it. As is the Southern California class of people that we played against that were of our same age group. I would say out of the maybe thousand kids that were in that area, I'd say 15 to 20% of them actually made it to professional or or got drafted by a professional baseball team. Now I'd say probably 10% of that number actually got in, got up and had playing time in the, in the pros, but a lot of guys I played with got drafted. So, you know, say what you want, but when you're playing that much, you're going to be good, and that's what it produces. It produces that. Go ahead. So even in spite of the fact that you can train your entire life, all that can come to a halt if the opportunity the opportunities do not, not exist. What I mean by that is that say you show up at a high school and you have the same situation situation arise that you experienced. Technically you should be on the roster to play for the varsity team, right? If you're good enough, if you prove everything that you've done, if you have worked at this for years, that could all be stopped if there's politics involved. And therefore your whole fucking career could be derailed at the high school level because of politics. Yeah. Through essentially no fault of your own. And it doesn't have to happen just there. It can happen at any level. Uh, Again, playing travel baseball. I was the victim a lot of times of the coach's kid deal because, Hey, guess what? The coach's kid, what does he do? He usually plays catcher because people think that's an easy position to do, but it's really not. But you can cover up if you're bad at it. You can kind of cover up. If you're just good at stopping the ball, then cool. All right, you're, you can do all right. But first travel ball team I got, or shit, every travel ball team I got picked up on, coach's kid was always the catcher. I was never, or some, it, it, I think there was one travel team I played on where it wasn't the coach's kid that was the catcher, and I ended up, it was like the kid who I think was, was his parents like sucked ass a lot. And so that was th- that kid was going to be in there. I wasn't unseating that kid. But one of the things that got me picked up by these teams was because I had the ability to hit. You know, I'm not left handed in terms of throwing or anything like that, but I bat left handed. So batting left handed is an advantage over both people who throw right handed. Now, if I th- I hated fucking going against left handed pitchers because it sucks. You're, I'm at a disadvantage. But when you have that advantage of being a left-handed hitter going against a right-handed pitcher, 
you have an advantage. And so anyways, I could hit well. So that was what got me picked up on these teams. So what I had to do is I had to adapt and learn how to play another position. So I, that's when I learned how to play third base. And man, I'd love to find the guy that on, on the travel team that I, that I beat out for <laughs> to play third base. I'd love to fucking play that. I'd love to find that guy. Go ahead. All right. I just want to come, come in with a real tangential story. Yeah, do it. So I went to the bathroom and it was dark and I turned the lights on and I went to go take a piss. Right. And when I start washing my hands, I noticed that on the, on the fucking floor, there was a towel, but on top of the towel was these ears popping out. So when I'm looking in the mirror, there's the, the counter, right? With the sink and everything. Uh-huh. I just see two fucking ears <laughs> poking out. So then I look down and your fucking cat, your cat was there the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I didn't even know I didn't even fucking notice the cat. It was just <laughs> it was just there. <laughs> yeah, man. She's a psychopath, man. She's like a ninja. But uh <laughs> anyways, so yeah, like what you were saying. Any of these things, any a multitude of things could happen where politics, fucking the weather, I, who knows? Anything that's outside of your control can affect what's going to happen. So you just have to go in and try to be the best that you can that you can be. Right. And even doing what it takes to become the, the best at something, it really separates whether you actually like doing it or not, because I, I'm gonna be honest, I hated baseball for a while, for a long time. I mean, I still kind of hate baseball. I, I don't know. I mean, I still have that in the back of my mind of fuck. I, it, it's sure it's been 25 years since I've had to play baseball every weekend for my life. But goddamn, I still think back sometimes and like I'll have nightmares and I'll wake up and just go, oh, Jesus Christ. What? Oh, I'm going to be late for the fucking game. Oh, no, wait a minute. No, no, it's just, it's, I'm good. I'm good. I haven't played baseball in fucking 20 years. So it's, you know, good to go. All right. Calm down. Calm down. So. It, it really it really did make me hate it. And when you're a kid, you don't really get a say in whether you keep doing it because you could say, oh, uh, like you whine and complain. And, you know, yeah, listen, we're of the generation where our dad just would beat our asses if we fucking complain. So, yeah, you know, you just stop complaining after a while. So and you just do it and it sucks. Yeah, it, it's good. It taught me discipline and it taught me how to keep going or whatever. And, you know, uh, whatever bullshit you want to say. But. <laughs> At the end of the day, the first opportunity that I had to make a decision as to whether I wanted to continue doing it, I immediately chose to no longer do it. Which, what does that tell you? That just tells you I I didn't really like doing it that much in the first place. So, I don't don't regret, and this is the thing that a lot of people, when I tell this story to people, because sometimes people want to know about it. Oh, what happened with the baseball and blah, blah, blah. So, I tell them the whole story about what happened. And... Oh man, do you regret it? Like you could have, you could have definitely played when I, when I talk to dudes, they all that I used to play with the ones that are not dead anyways. uh, When I talk to them, when I see them around or say, Oh, Hey man, what happened, man? How come you didn't end up getting, making it? What, what happened? I tell them the story. Oh man, do you regret it? Fuck no, I don't regret it because honestly I probably would have hated my job of being a professional baseball player because I hated baseball at that point. So and honestly, I'd be much rather sitting here 20 years later or 18, 19, how many years later from fucking since it's been since I played in high school. I'd rather be sitting here doing this than actually playing baseball for a living. Good. It's also drone behavior. Uh, NPC like behavior. And I, I know it's slightly disrespectful, but think about this, man. A lot of people that play baseball, yeah, they go back and and do coaching and some, you know, they they get back to mentoring in some way, right? Because they love the sport that much. But I I think deep down, they they still long for the days of their prime and, and, and having an impact on the sport and things like that. And with this, man, this this is freedom. Like to me, this is freedom. And I mean, shoot, I, I played tennis, dude. I played tennis in high school and I liked it initially, but then I got more or less the same rhetoric. My brother 
you know, planned for me. He, he kept saying, oh, you're going to play for USC. You're going to play for UCLA. And I was pretty good. But then something happened in high school where I started changing things. You know how you don't fuck with your swing? Yeah. When you have something and you just it just works. Sometimes that happens in tennis where you tweak something and it just unravels everything. Like You can't get that shit back unless you work at it. Like you go find your swing again. And that happened. And I feel that my love for the sport started to decline at high school. And by the end of it, I ended up not, I mean, I played all four years varsity, but by the end of it, I fucking hated tennis as well. And I don't even really play that much anymore. I mean, I still kind of like the sport, but I just liked hitting the ball. That was more or less it. It wasn't competitive. It was just the fact that I like playing everybody in my family played and all that shit. But I hate, when parents put expectations on you, because that shit is whack. If your kid wants to play a sport and if they even have ideations or ideas about going pro, you let them make that decision on their own. You don't do that and force it on them because I'm not going to say I'm not going to be specific, but I feel I feel as though there's a situation for myself that I'm observing that there's a person that exists that has a father and they might be trying to get this person to at least play on the baseball team, right? For, for high school. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, you know, for all this time that you put into somebody playing travel ball for God knows how long, and then getting on the high school team, you're almost you're almost saying that you want to, and maybe this is me inferring or whatever, but you're almost saying that if you don't become a pro player, that everything up to that point was a waste. Yeah. I mean, it, I, honestly, it kind of is it, all that time I spent playing baseball. I have become an, I, I, say what you want about, because I'm sure, I'm sure there's people out there that know who that, that know me and they fucking will say, Oh, he wasn't that good. Or he was what say what you want about that, but you cannot deny the fact <clears throat> that the the things I've done in the time that I played and the amount of time that I spent playing, I am a certified expert at baseball. I, I am a master at baseball. I'm an expert at it. And yes, I, I became an expert in baseball to do nothing with baseball in 20 fucking years to, to do absolutely nothing with it. Yeah, I enjoy going and watching pro ball game. I'll go to angel games and stuff, you know, whatever. I'll go go watch games and yeah, I'll see shit. And I almost can't watch baseball because even because I don't want to critique motherfuckers. But it's like if somebody has a hole in their swing, I'm like, why are they fucking throwing that there? You th- you throw it fucking high and or high and outside this. You'll never fucking hit the ball. What is wrong with these assholes? Don't they fucking know this? They, they're dedicated. They have people that just study that. And you're telling me that you guys don't know that I'm watching this shit on TV and I can see it. And oh, what happens? Oh, they throw one up and uh, high and outside fucking whiff. And then they don't do it again. You're not going to just keep it. Na- what is wrong with you idiots? Yeah, I'm probably more of an expert than they are potentially because of the amount of hours I've put in at a young age and into my middle adult or early adulthood of playing baseball. And I know that that's a rarity that I'm not a lot of people spent a lot of time doing that because most people played lived in places where it wasn't warm all the time. They lived in places where it was snowing or it was raining or a lot or whatever. Southern California was a very, is a very exclusive place for baseball. And a lot of great baseball players come out of here because we can play it year round. We can literally play it every weekend, 52 fucking weeks out of the year because the weather is genuinely generally pretty damn good. And if you live in pretty much any other state, you're going to experience four seasons. You're going to have winter, where it snows, can't play baseball in the snow. You're going to have uh, a, a spring where it rains a shit ton. Up, oh, can't play baseball in the rain. Uh, yeah, you're going to have summer and then oh, fall again. Well, it starts fucking snowing in uh, October in most places, sometimes in September. So, well, that's out. Can't play. Can't play for six months. So. When you have when you have people who have done this and played that much. Yeah, I've probably played I probably played more than most people like at that time than most people do nowadays going into fucking the major leagues at the age. If you if you take eight to 18 and compare the amount of hours I played to people that the, the majority of people, I would say I am in the probably top five percent. Good. Yeah. So you probably jammed who the fuck knows 10 years in five years. 
or oh, whatever easily. the whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever the number is. In ten years, I probably jammed twenty years worth of no, uh, normal players. Probably even more than that. Maybe even thirty years because, like I said, we were playing all the time, every weekend. So every every week, doing something. So I will say that now that has been for nothing. Like you were saying, because I did all that, and now I don't do anything baseball related. I've had guys ask me that, oh, hey, they ask me where I'm working and I tell them and they're like, oh, you coaching there? And I'm like, Fuck, no, I don't do anything baseball related because I don't want to. I have no fucking desire to do anything baseball related. Pro- Good. But notice that I'll just throw this in real quick, but it, it's just weird when people hang on to the thing of the past, you know, for sports. to If you played baseball, you're still talking about baseball. Yeah. And if you go to fucking Frankensons, you see old retired baseball players still thinking about the good old days, signing autographs. That's the kind of life you live. If you if you if you put yourself in that situation, I think you would have. Let's say you became a pro professional baseball player. You probably be at Frankensons fucking every weekend trying to get uh, autographs for for money or some shit. Yeah, to relive the glory days, basically. But, but this, I hate to say it, or I'd love to say it. This is freedom, dude. You would talk about any topic. You get to be known for your mind. You get to be known for all the fascinations and interests that you have. So that's where I defend. Not that we're defending our own cause with this whole <laughs> fucking thing. But between being a professional baseball player and doing this shit, this, this is way better. Yeah. And, and listen, I know people are going to fucking think I'm crazy because why wouldn't you want to have millions of dollars and have a fucking supermodel wife and live in a mansion and 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 just play baseball fucking nine months out of the year or whatever uh, well i don't want to because i don't want to i i love my current i love my wife i don't need to fu- i don't want a supermodel fucking wife my wife is a supermodel all right well, to me anyways she's not actually a supermodel i mean she could be if she wanted to but she the, regards besides the point yeah could i make millions of dollars sure but then guess what then i'm gonna have even more fucking problems than i already have now Everybody thinks that money is the solution to everything, but <clears throat> that's the one thing I've learned. It's fucking not. So don't do shit for money. Do it because you love it and enjoy it. Go ahead. Don't do it because people have expectations <laughs> of you either. Just do things that you enjoy for your own enjoyment, whatever fulfills you. I know that sounds like some uh, Barney shit. I, I know that's an obscure reference at this point that Barney's been so far <laughs> away, but man. You can't live for other people. That that is the 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 lesson to be learned here. And I, I'm going to say this right now, okay? This is one of the things that I think would be really interesting to talk about if we have on the Without Censor podcast. And I know this will never fucking happen, but yeah, I played baseball for many years with Joe Kelly, current professional baseball player, right? Won two World Series, currently on the Dodgers. You know, has I, I don't I don't know the fucking details on his stats, but winning two World Series, you fucking done something for, with your life, right? You you've achieved the the rarely achievable by doing that, and I would love to fucking have him come sit in the garage, drink some beers, fucking take some so smoke some cigars, and let's talk about let's talk about the old days. And I'd love to ask him, hey man. I was going through the same shit you were going through at the same time. We were going through it together, right? Where our dads were fucking constantly on us to be basically professional baseball players, to live their dreams through us, right? Do you really like fucking baseball? Because I hated it at, at a certain point. I'd love, to, I'd love to know the answer to that question. I, I'd love to talk to any of the guys that I played with. Sure, he's a outlier example of someone who's reached the pinnacle of the sport basically so i'd love to find out from him now will that ever happen listen i'm I'm not gonna hold my breath i'm a nobody at this point go ahead and uh in spite of the fact that i'm talking shit a bit about sports i mean i enjoy sports and all that shit but i i did i did poo poo and pee pee a little bit on athletes a little bit (laughs) but I will say it is rather cool to see somebody from our locale end up playing professional baseball and to reach the pinnacle of the sport on two separate occasions. Uh, I I think that is rather cool. Yeah, I agree. Um, Oh, God, sorry. 
I, I do want to add as well that I've had this mean streak about other regions in Southern California, LA and OC, possibly even San Diego, having this hubris that they're kind of the shit when it comes to Southern California. And it's happening slightly on the music podcast and maybe on this one too. Now that we get to talk about Corona High School being a juggernaut as far as baseball goes, I'm trying to take pride in where the fuck I live because I'm tired of hearing about fucking everybody else. LA's the place to be for everything. OC2 in San Diego. Fuck that. Inland Empire shit. There's nothing to do out here. Fuck all that, dude. Uh, I, I'm trying to embrace everything that is this this area. I, I completely agree. I think that, yeah, Orange County and L.A., they get all the fucking hype, right? They get all the, the love, essentially, because those are the areas. Even when, when I was playing baseball back in the back in the days, the travel teams from the L.A. and the O.C. area, especially the fucking Orange County area, man, they always had the best shit. They had the best equipment. They had the best fields. The best of the best for those fucking mother- one of the teams that we played against. And there's a dude that was on the, the, uh, the opposing team. He ended up playing for the Angels. And uh, they they were on this team called the Mama's Boys. That's how f- that's how fun. And they were dude. They were they were the f- they were the bane of our existence <laughs> because in travel baseball back then, these fucking assholes would we would trade W's with them on winning tournaments. And it was between us. We were, we were the Corona Wolverines. That was our that was our team. And we played against these guys. Man, we fucking traded traded against them all the time. Traded wins. They would whoop our ass some days. Some days we'd whoop their that their ass. And every time, regardless of what happened, they were always the most pompous. Fucking, I hated every single one of those dudes. And I don't know them. I don't know them at all. I didn't know them <laughs> if for, un, for any reason. I had no understanding of them as people at all. But man, I fucking hated their guts. And really, looking back, it's like for no reason. I don't know why. It was just, it's just I hated them. But but that's probably part of the reason is because just because they're from there, they always got even when they would be introduced at tournaments, they'd always get better introductions than we would. And we were always just kind of poo pooed. And real quick, before you say that, I just want to say when when we went to the to the pony, uh, not the World Series, but we went to the section right before when we got eliminated, when when we were there, our uniforms were so ugly that they referred to us as clown town. They, because we're, you know, we're Corona, we're crown town. So they would, every, everywhere we went, we got made fun of constantly for being known as clown town. And those assholes in Orange County always fucking were making, but they were, they were the worst at calling us that. And then from then on, because our travel team played basically all in that league that year, we all took, we took the whole team, the coach took the whole team into the fucking regular league and we won the whole thing and went almost to the Pony World Series. And, Everyone else that we played against in the travel teams were on those teams, the all-star teams of, of those other leagues, like the Orange County Leagues. So we played these assholes again. We couldn't fucking get rid. We whooped their asses. Luckily for us, we we won that that, that go around. But from then on, anytime we play anybody, clown town. It was always clown town. And I just wanted to stab them. Anyways, go ahead. Sorry. I, I, I don't know if this is it <sighs> for you, but this is what it was for me, was that being from where we're at, I feel as though other counties like LA County or, or orange County or fuck maybe to an extent, Riverside County over towards Palm Springs, La Quinta over towards that area. Yeah. To me, may, maybe I'm wrong about this. Cause even uh, Rancho Cucamonga is kind of the, um, I don't know if that's the upper class of Inland Empire. Yeah. That's basically <laughs> the orange County of Inland Empire. <laughs> but I guess the way I saw it, because when we went to CIF to play against Beverly Hills and I forgot what school, dude, these motherfuckers must have been born with a fucking silver spoon in their mouth because they had their own private coaches. Oh, yeah. Most baller shit as far as uh, uniforms went. They had every advantage to fucking win. And that goes for Orange County, too. And, of the, you know, of the Palm Springs, uh, Coachella Valley or whatever the fuck, because they had a really good tennis team, too. Is You know, they're they're kind of baller. But all, all that to really say is that, dude, imagine if Corona had the same opportunities 
that these motherfuckers, we'd be just as good as them because they whooped their oh. ass. They whooped their ass, but they also made the sport their fucking life. Like that was what they did or whatever. So uh, naturally they were the best. And I don't know if I'm making this about money or like a struggle between the middle class and the upper class, but that's what it felt like when we played Orange County or fucking uh, L.A. County teams, especially Beverly Hills against Corona for tennis, man. That, that was a complete slaughter. <coughs> that is a hell of a point you make. And I think you might be right because any team we played. Yeah. Like I said, they had the best shit right from Orange. The Orange County teams always had the best shit. And the Inland Empire team, we were looked at as, oh, those are just those weird desert people. And. They're just eh, nobody gives a shit about them. They're not they're not worth anything. They're they're fucking scumbags. They're they're lower class individuals is how we were looked at. And I will say we didn't have the best shit like, OK, those clown town uniforms that we had. I still have it. OK, I, I don't know why. I, it's the one thing that I haven't been able to to get rid of for some reason. And I don't know if there's some weird deep seated fucking, I don't know, connection there that I just have to it because it was such a. It, it it consumed my life for basically 10 years. So I have like all my old jerseys and shit from from teams that I was on. I have them all. And the clown town jersey. I might have to fucking put it up on the on the Instagram just so people can see what the fuck we're talking about. It is the I guess it's the ugliest shit ever. It's it's it was supposed to be red, white and blue. So it's like the, this part's red. The sleeves are blue. The words are white. And the font is it just looks fucking horrific. And dude, I remember the coach. uh he fucking great guy had a fucking temper and a heart problem and man <laughs> bad combination but i but it was the best he was he was great and i remember he was so excited when he got these uniforms because he's like you guys i finally got us something that's good and we all were like oh those are fucking terrible and so none of us had the heart to tell him that so we just were like yeah yeah these are awesome and then we started getting made fun of it and then we said nah you know what Fuck that. These are the greatest uniforms we've ever had and that anyone has ever had. These are the best uniforms ever. Fuck yeah. And so to make it even more hideous, every time we won a section, because there was like, I think, six or seven sections to get to the World Series. Every time we won, he took a star of a various size and sh- and had it sewn on each fucking jersey on the sleeve. <laughs> and it, again, complete <laughs> garbage disgusting i th- i want i threw up in my mouth a little just fucking talking about it right now but that was what we that was what we were excited about what was to get excited about was man now we finally have something the uniforms that we had were so cheap for our travel ball team that we literally just had an undershirt and there was there was no sleeves it was like a vest it was like the uniform shirt and then you we just had cuz we were the we used the michigan colors so we were it was dark blue it was like a navy blue and then it was this gold like just a t-shirt that we wore underneath it that no sleeves on the vet on the jersey it was just a vest and man that was fucking that was also terrible we, we probably had the worst jerseys everybody else had professional baseball looking jerseys and we had those but now granted we weren't rich uh, we, we you got to work with what you got to work and our parents are already spending an ass load of money to buy us gear and to pay for these fucking overpriced shitty uniforms. And also you had to pay, it was a pay to play type deal. So they're pay, we had to pay to go to tournaments. Like you, the, the team, there was a team entry cost and they just split it amongst everybody who was, who was playing, who went to the thing. There was 13 guys. Cool. If it's $1,300 to play in this tournament, everybody pays a hundred dollars and we get to play in this fucking tournament. And I'll tell you what, man, I mean, I did just, I, I mean, I have, I think I have fucking all of my trophies still too. And I haven't, that's another thing I haven't been able to fucking unload. I have, I have rings. I have fucking medals, all kinds of stupid shit that I, I don't know. I just can't get rid of it for some reason. And maybe that's some weird psychological problem that I have. Maybe it's part of my hoarder mentality. I don't know. But, and again, I say, I hate playing, I hate baseball, but, but that's, I can't, I, I just can't let those things go for some reason. And I, and honestly, I never look at them and say, oh man, I wish I was back in the days of doing this. No, I hated that time period of my life. Same thing with high school. I hated fucking high school. I'm so glad that I don't ever have to think about going back to high school again. <coughs> I still have nightmares. Like I'm still in high school. Those are what my nightmares are as an adult is that, oh God, I have to go back to class. Oh, thank God. I never have to go back to that again. I hated that shit. I don't understand people who who fucking look back and say, God, what what a great time it was to be in high school. Yeah, listen, sure. We did some fucking hilarious and ridiculous shit as high school kids, but 
that time period sucked ass. <laughs> that was the most of a of a fucking slave I think I've ever been in my life. Is 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 in high school, and I and talk about NPC mentality. That's what exactly what the fuck that is, man. That is the NPC mentality to a T. And anyways, I know I've veered off the subject a little bit here, but back to what you were saying about Orange County, L.A. County. Yeah, I agree. Fuck all of them. All right. Fuck those rich assholes. And now, granted, there's a lot of little places in L.A. County that are not rich, that they are very poor, maybe even poorer than here over here in the Inland Empire. Maybe not, you know. Paris poor, but you know, poor. So I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about essentially all of Orange County and uh, like Beverly Hills, uh, fucking Santa Monica, Brentwood. Oh, fucking Brentwood. Yeah. Fuck those assholes. And what's funny is they pay all this money and they have all these expert trainers, but those fucking kids didn't want it, man. Like, yeah, maybe we were grinding so hard and it made us hate it. Maybe that's what made us good was because we hated it so much. We knew the only way we were going to not have to practice four times a week was if we actually fucking won and then we could get a break. You trying to talk or are you just fucking? No, I'm just, I'm just sticking just in. Fingering the fucking conch. So I, I think that was part of the reason uh, that was how we had this like grittiness. We had this grittiness that I don't think a lot of the other rich boy teams had. And they were very prance, like prancy, fucking very. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't say it now, but it, you know, it, they were very soft. All right, that was <laughs> that's, that's, that's the modern equivalent that I can come up with that that I can use. But there was there was that 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 little that that dainty aspect to them that they just weren't tough, man. And that was one of the things that the the coach of the rich of the of the the travel team that played on for years. He always wrote this thing on the game balls that he would give out. He always wrote, hey, oh, yeah, you, this guy, he's a tough nut. All right. Like, that's what he would write. <laughs> and I think I still have some game balls upstairs that have that written on there buried somewhere. And that is some hilarious shit because it's true. Like, we had this toughness about us that I think was lost on a lot of those other people. Like, we had this, like, killer instinct, and they were just kind of like, Oh yes, we we know we're going to win. Oh yes, we're we're better than you. Hmm. Let me sip my tea as I as I stick my pinky up and look down my nose at you, peasant. They had that sort of mentality, and we had the oh yeah, let's get the guillotine out, motherfucker type mentality. And I think that's why we went as far as we did, and why we were as good as we were. I don't think we were necessarily the best team, but. I think we wanted it more and we were fucking angry because we hated playing baseball. I think, I think that's what it was. I think we all fucking hated doing this. And so we just wanted it to end. And then the only way we wouldn't get beat by our parents or have to do a shit ton of practice was to win. So we just did everything we could to fucking win. And that's that good to segue into, uh, talking about grit, my own personal experience with sports. I think I cared about certain scenarios when I'd play football with my friends. I wanted to kick my friend's ass to, to know that they, I was better than them. Yeah. But I didn't have it all the time. I didn't have the competitive edge to drive me to be better. I mean, for tennis, I certainly didn't have it. I just knew I was good. I was pretty fucking decent, but I wasn't Kobe Bryant fucking killer instinct going to the local gym to knock down shots on a weekend as opposed to partying and doing dumb shit. I know I didn't have that, but for this, I keep talking about this, but I have the fucking killer instinct for this shit. I know for sure, dude, I know for sure. I got the killer instinct for this shit because I'm doing this shit day in and day out. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm I'll, I'll say this. I, I also ha- I think I have that I had that killer instinct for baseball for whatever reason and then ended up hating it. And I that's one of the things that I think I've been looking for because I thought about every time I thought about sure eventually going back and play, trying to play baseball again. But then every time I do it, every time I get to the point of I'm about to go do it, I just say, fuck, man, I already did that. I already was I already mastered that. I already did the the Musashi 
finding the way. All right. I already found the way in baseball. I don't, why do I want to go do that again? There's nothing left for me to do that I can do in baseball. So I, I always petered out and never fucking actually follow through with it. And I think the thing that I was actually looking for was something for the competitiveness that I have, because I am naturally just an extremely competitive person. I have to fucking win everything that I do and I will win by any means necessary. I have a saying when I play, sometimes we play, uh, you know, I play board games or we play like games or whatever with people. <clears throat> and I always tell people, I always say, you know, I literally cheat on everything except my wife. I cheat at every fucking game I play so that I can win because I have to win. And I don't care. I have loose morals when it comes to, to <laughs> victory. So as long as I win, I don't give a fuck how it happened. You never have to know that I had some cards hidden in my pocket or that I had some shit. I do that all the time. I mean, I hope the people I play with don't actually listen to this so they don't catch on to my tricks. But uh, yeah, I cheat all the time because to me, I'm willing to win by any means necessary. The ends justifies the means for, for victory for me. So this is, this is something that I have rekindled that, I guess, or I found my thing to do that with. And, you know, like last month we were talking about the numbers were lower last month. I was fucking livid, man. I was pissed. And look what we did in turn. We got that shit back up again. The competitiveness. Now I'm like, cool. I, we're going to beat that. And again, we don't we can't know what everybody else is doing because it's not public information. We're, we're a rarity where we publicly disclose all of our shit and numbers so that people can see what we're doing, right? <clears throat> Everyone else hides their shit, likely because they're probably not doing that well. But I know we're doing better than some, probably doing better than most, not the best. But right now, we do what we can and we know what we're doing. We can compete basically against ourselves. That's what we're doing. That, that's, that's, that's the best part because I know we're in a good spot when we know we're not competing that's how you know you're going to achieve next level shit when you when you're not trying to compare yourself with other people and you're just going for what you can do the best for you. I, I think that's when you really go past the edge, you achieve for the stratosphere. I feel like that's where we're going with this. I know it's tangentially related to sports, but yeah. Right. So <clears throat> That's what this has become for me. This is my this is sport for me. This is this is my competitive edge that is that has been resharpened after somewhat dulling over the years. And oh, we're gonna win this shit. I may not know how, or I may not know why or what, but we're gonna what I don't hell, I don't even know what we're gonna win, but we're gonna <laughs> win this. That's all I know. And I'm gonna do whatever the fuck it takes. So, good. All right. Is there anything else, Tad? Because I kind of want to talk oh, about fuck, fanatics. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Let's let's rant about fanatics. All right. <clears throat> so, as many of you know, the NHL playoffs are currently going on, and as you may or may not know, the jerseys that are made are made by Adidas currently, but then this coming year, fanatics will be taking over. And I am not having that shit. I am not going to purchase a fanatics created product because as you have seen on many major league games, the pants end up ripping guys are sweating and their junks all over the place. And you could see it when they zoom in on the players and shit. And this is just to speak about the quality of fanatics. And I just could not have that. So I ended up, purchasing a hockey jersey and I recommend anybody that is a fan of hockey and whatever team you may follow go buy your fucking jersey now while while you still can because this is it this is the end of the line for Adidas and who the fuck knows who Fanatics is going to license to make their products or if they're just making it themselves do not take take that chance purchase an Adidas jersey while you can and to further add to this there's i think this needs to be looked into that fanatics has a monopoly across all sports that they make all base or uh, sports attire in general I, i'm not a fan of that they need to break that shit up because 
we need quality for all the products, the hats, the the shirts, and all that shit. They, they need to break that up and give other companies a chance because I'm I'm not down with that because it's obviously suffering that these jerseys that the baseball players are having are falling apart. Everybody fucking hates them. We need to be done with that shit. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. And you know what Fanatics is doing? Like, there's a guy right now because because obviously we're going to hashtag Fanatics in this in this episode, right? And hell, I might even at them on Twitter and fucking start saying some shit. But there's going to be a guy at Fanatics who's going to listen to this because I know that they have somebody anytime someone talks about them that they got to fucking know what's going on. And he's going to literally be sitting there as we're talking shit about them going, you got to give us a shot. He's going to say, come on, man, just, just give us a chance, man. It's funny because on the Dodgers, one of their players, Jason Hayward, was doing some type of interview and he said, yeah, these jerseys are fine. They're great. We love them. I'm like, bro, you beat a mark for the fucking you beat a marker for Natic like, <laughs> Come on, you can't you can't tell me that's the truth when everybody else that's part of the M- MLB Players Association is saying this is this is the worst jerseys that we've ever had. He's like, nah, these, these are cool. I'm like, did you get paid? Did you get paid, dog? Of course he got paid. <laughs> That's how, well, I mean, that's how they make their money. That's how they make a lot of money, all right? You get paid to say, yeah, man, this is great. Let me give a sweet endorsement to Fanatics jerseys. I don't give a shit about Fanatics jerseys. As long as they pay me, as long as the check clears, I'll say whatever the hell you want. And I'll I'll say this right now. If Fanatics wants to, you know, maybe, uh, I don't know, uh, increase their stock amongst the Game Rage audience, you know, hey, we'll shill for you guys for the right price, all right? We're, our, we, we're talking shit now, but our morals are real loose. If we got some free jerseys and, you know, a little bit of cash, we'd probably be like, oh, you know, these aren't actually so bad. These are actually pretty good jerseys. You know what I'm saying, man? Maybe you guys should all check them out. Hey, hey, you know what's actually cool is uh, if I wanted somebody to see my dick, I could just lift up my shirt and they could see it because, like, these, that's, it's see-through. This is great. We love this. It's amazing. Fanatics. Buy the jerseys. Uh, of course. Oh, hold on. We didn't say anything <laughs> about that. Fuck that. No, no. That was an, ex- <laughs> that was, that was an example of the uh, commercial. Hey, wait. I think your microphone's not working. Testing? Yeah, here. Oh, oh my God. I ju- it just okay so you just testing didn't, yeah you just must have knocked it it was literally right there when you were yelling okay i think it, it picked it up on my mic so oh my god we're good let me make sure let me go back and look oh yeah we're good okay cool i just wanted to hopefully that was just the minor the one time minor discrepancy for this particular episode <laughs> but uh are we allowed to talk about sports on this podcast or <laughs> So you want to listen to a pretty all right podcast about sports, do you? Yeah. So, I mean, shit. We're, I just want to go over real quickly the uh, events that have been happening in baseball. Actually, just sports in general. So we'll go ahead and start with the Nippon Sports Report. Yo! I just want to say that's my favorite fucking sound effect. I think it's between that one and the Scott Steiner, but that, that one's fucking, I think, edging it out. So there's been a lot of cool things happening with uh, Japanese players in baseball. One of them being the fucking badass story that is Shota Imanaga from the Chicago. Chicago, (laughs) I I, uh, mixed up my words there. Too many Cokes. Um, The Chicago Cubs. This dude is a man of the people. I fucking love this dude. I am not a fan of the Cubs, but. This guy has completely won me over, uh, at least from the last time uh, I checked out his stats. He's basically gone 4-0 and has a sub-1 ERA, putting up ridiculous numbers. And I think he had a streak where he had, uh, what was it, 18, 12 to 18 scoreless innings. Dude's putting up monster numbers. The fans fucking love him. They're, they had like a happy Gilmore moment in Chicago, Wrigley Field. Out in the outfield, these guys came in. It was five dudes wearing Chicago Cubs, you know, shirts or whatever. They took off their shit and on their bellies, they had Shota spelled out. And it, it, I don't know, man. He's he wicked, <laughs> wicked awesome dude. And then on top of the fact that uh, the fans love him, the guy's a fucking meme, dude. They went to go play, I think, the Chicago, or rather, the Boston Red Sox. Somebody hit a fucking nuke off of him, and he just looks at it, and he's like, oh, I was not aware of your, I was not aware of your game, dude. And then from then then on, it was lights out, and 
I just respect the dude's game. And as far as Dodgers go, uh, they had a seven and two road trip. Uh, one of the games that I ended up watching was uh, it ended up going to extra innings, scored an extra run to to uh, take the lead. And then, of course, the bullshit happens. As you know, they put a runner on second to make the extra innings go by quicker. So I think it was like the first or second pitch. The Dodgers reliever ended up throwing a meatball and it fucking it, it was gone, dude. No question about it. I tuned into the game. And as soon as I turned to that, I see the fucking home run. And I'm like, God damn it. Why did I even bother watching? Uh, but overall, teams doing stellar. The five through nine bats are coming alive. Yoshinobu, after a terrible start with uh, the San Diego Padres, uh, doing absolute shit. These last two starts going 12. Actually, technically, he's gone, I think, 15, 14 scoreless innings across, uh, I guess you could say, three starts. And the thing that has been damaging him the most is, dude, his fastball, I hate to say it, but he's been cook. He's been cooking meatballs, dude, throwing it right in the middle of the strike zone. And people have been knocking the shit out of it. But when it comes to the fucking curveball, the yo-yo curveball and the splitter, dude, n- nobody can touch him. So I wanted to quickly ask you, what, what do you care about when it comes to pitches? Because I I know fastballs like hitting one hundred and five miles. Uh, that's the thing that everybody's doing to strike dudes out. But to me, nothing beats a well-placed pitch and nothing beats fucking junk like curveballs and all the other nasty pitches that, you know, a pitcher may develop in their career. I like the junk, dude. I I love that. Yeah, I I agree. Uh, I will say that I do think that it's more important to be able to have a certain level of accuracy. Uh, If you can be pinpoint accurate and put the ball where you want it. I think that's much more effective than than just throwing 105 fucking miles an hour. Cause sure you could throw fucking 105 miles an hour all you want, but if you can't put it where you want it to go and you have no control and you're, you're not going to be super effective. Also, same thing goes with the junk pitches. I do love some fucking curve balls, some screw balls, man. Uh, I'll, I'll save this for if the eventual Joe Kelly fucking episode ever comes out, if he ever actually does come on. But I don't know if you'll even remember this, but we used to have like code names for pitches. And so we'll we'll talk about it on there just to preview in case that ever happens. And then uh, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see if that happens. But yeah, we used to have code names for pitches. But if you can put a pitch where you want it to go, even the junk, because look, you could have a fucking shitty hanging curveball. OK, why are you going to throw it if you're just going to hang it and some dude's going to just frozen rope that shit to fucking left field Mm. pointless not even worth throwing but if you can put the ball where you want it to go and really all like i said control is more important i think than having a massive array of junk pitches i don't think you need to have a lot i think if you have uh, a decent mid 90s fastball if you have that you can put where you want it to go and if you have potentially two junk pitches that will do what you want it to do 90% of the time. I think that you're going to almost be untouchable because if you have a nice 12, six curveball and maybe like a slider couple that with, you know, a consistently mid nineties fastball that you can put where you want. Everybody's striking out. Good. Yeah. I love me a good change up too. Um, Oh yeah. Oh, circle change. Uh, A nice circle change. Fucking. Oh man. I love that. My favorite junk pitch, though, the knuckleball. I love the shit out of a knuckleball. Good. Yeah, dude. I for one pitcher that I used to love in the mid 2000s was this guy that uh, shit. I forgot. He, I think he played on Toronto Blue Jays and also the New York Mets. Um, and his name was R.A. Dickey. And he was specifically a knuckleballer. Like that was his that was his gimmick. And I fucking love that because you don't see that where somebody's committed to pitching that type of shit especially because you don't know what a knuckleball is going to do when it comes out of your, your hand sometimes you fuck up and it just there's a weird movement or whatever and yeah man it'd be nice to see people mixing 
more junk than fastballs because I think there's something of an epidemic going on with fastballs and people blowing out their arms and end up getting like Tommy John surgeries and shit. And that shit sucks. But what are you going to do? They, I think a lot of pitchers feel the pressure to throw that type of shit because everybody's like hitting and stuff. So I don't know. I, I just think that yes, the fastball is flashy and all that shit, but you can't beat a well-placed ball, dude. You can't beat uh, somebody that can master the strike zone and, and get the ball where they need to. And I, I don't know where else to slide, but yeah. Yeah, I agree. And uh, yeah, fucking knuckleball man is, is a, is a mystery. Knuckleball is a mystery, <laughs> but you have no idea what's going to, I, I don't know anyone who knows what a knuckleball is going to do once it leaves their hand. Some people it does. It looks like they're controlling it with the force and moving it side <laughs> to side. And then there's like with me, I, I, I could get some movement on knuckleball that I used to throw, <clears throat> but man, I was real good at making it stop. Like it would not rotate at all. It, it would just fly sh- straight and do a little bit of movement. But there is something when you, when you're looking at it come out of your hand and you you don't see it rotating, it just fucking throws off your perception of like space time. And <laughs> you feel like you're in outer space cuz you're like what is fucking happening here? I'm am I in a new dimension? Like what 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 is fucking going on? And that was always cool because I'd fuck people with that and it didn't really do a lot. <laughs> it would just be still. It would look like it was still and they would just go ah, and then just not. It's like they had an aneurysm and they just freeze. And then that was it because because I used to throw hard as shit. Now, granted, I was not really a pitcher, but, you know, you develop arm strength from throwing down to second base all the time. So, you know, when the time came when I was playing on shitty teams and they needed somebody to throw because they ran out of pitchers, eh, they'd. They'd switch me out with the guy who was the left-handed first baseman because the coach had a left-handed catcher's glove for some reason, mm. and they'd let him catch, and I would just go and just throw the fucking gas, and then I'd throw three pitches to a batter. I'd throw two of them right down the middle, just gas, and they'd either swing and miss or they'd foul it off, and then I'd hit him with that fucking knuckleball, and it, that was it, lights out. And then my arm was pretty much fucked after that because uh, I would literally throw it as hard as I fucking could <laughs> <laughs> for for like 12 pitches. And then I was done. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's all I got. Okay, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you ever. OK, well, you obviously played baseball and travel ball and all that shit. Uh, but I used to play baseball a lot. At home where uh, my garage or the, the, gar- the garage door was a square. So it had squares everywhere. So I can kind of make a strike zone uh, from knees to shoulders or whatever. And I, so I play with the neighborhood kids and all that stuff. One thing, I mean, dude, when you play baseball and stuff and you, you see somebody throwing a curveball and that shit ends up behind you and then it comes back in. Oh. I mean, that shit is wild, dude. I don't know how people fucking do that where they can manipulate the ball to bend it inwards towards the strike zone but it's behind you dude that shit makes your fucking knees like whoa, 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 like, yeah, what the that's, fuck is that? that's <laughs> straight sorcery that's the baseball equivalent of breaking someone's ankles like in fucking in football or basketball like that's the baseball equivalent of it is a fucking curveball that gum starts out behind you and then comes right into the strike zone at the last minute oh yeah you're breaking that dude's ankles he's fucking he's eating shit because of that uh but anyways yeah uh not to make this obviously the dodgers podcast but to talk about the angels real quick uh just as i predicted started off the season strong and then now that we're about 30 games in we're like 11 and 20 (laughs) and dead last just as i predicted and it's gonna probably stay that way for a while Uh, i don't i don't know that we're i don't think we're gonna do much the next two to three years i think this is pretty much where it's gonna be dead last hey it's gonna keep driving the price of tickets down I'm cool with that. I'm <laughs> cool with being able to go. I mean, me and Frank went to the home opener and fuck, we were going to do the, the fifth episode on us going to that. But I, I we just got busy and had other shit going on. So we did other podcasts. Mm-hmm. But um, the home opener was a great game. We fucking lost, but it was a great game. And the tickets were well, they were free for us because our good buddy uh, Brian got us. Uh, you know, he bought a whole pack of slew of tickets <laughs> and didn't have anybody to go with. So we were like, hell yeah, we'll go. And he said, oh, don't worry about it, guys. So shout out to him for fucking making that happen. But I'm cool with later on this season in about, you know, July when it when the tickets are like eighteen dollars for like front row third base. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm down for that. I can't wait 
for that to happen. Hell, I might buy season tickets the next year if uh, it gets cheap enough just because they're going to be desperate for people to come to the games. Because I'll say it was packed, but man, they were playing the Red Sox and <laughs> there, there were a lot more Red Sox fans there than I than I had anticipated were going to be there. And I think that's indicative of Angel fans aren't really showing up to play. Other dickheads who have teams that are outside of the local area, they're going to come watch them play. And that's who's going to be at the majority. It's going to turn into a fucking Oakland A's situation, I feel like, if we don't turn our shit around and start doing something. Yeah, dude, this this is turning into some real wild shit with uh, the Oakland A's who have been relocated to the Sacramento region, which is just awful to hear. And I think they're going to be playing at some fucking college sports complex and i think it's probably half the size of what not that they could even sell (laughs) tickets to get people to go and less likely once the team actually gets there man what what a what a shit show that that franchise has turned into and also the baseball owner to i don't know if it would count as extortion but to try to get a new stadium that's going to be probably built on, you know, taxpayers dollars in Las Vegas or whatever the fuck they're going to do. Fuck man. I wish I, w- I wish that was my problem to be a sports owner, to get a stadium built by somebody else. So it, it doesn't cut up. It doesn't come out of my pocket. Uh, yeah. It's just, it's just the real shitty situation for that franchise and, and the fans that, uh, uh you know, a, uh, have supported that team for as long as they've been here. Cause you know, they're from Philadelphia originally, but that's just the nature of sports, dude. It's like, yeah, I don't, I don't know what else to add. Yeah. And again, that's going to happen. That, that Vegas thing is going to happen. And yeah, they fucking just got everything at the right time in the right position to where again, uh, really what hockey was the originator of putting sports in Vegas in terms of the big four or the big major sports uh, and then football did it. And now baseball is going to do it. And I'm sure there's going to be an NBA team that comes there shortly thereafter. So then the big four are going to all have a team in Vegas. And that's a huge market that for years that they didn't want to fuck with because of, because of why? Because they didn't want to be negatively associated with gambling, right? Sports gambling. So, but yet now they just don't give a shit. And I honestly, I think one of the reasons not to get too off topic, but I think one of the reasons why that's why the way has been paved for these big sports organizations to go there is strictly from the UFC. I think that the UFC has become enough of a mainstream sport that, they look at okay cool well they do stuff in vegas all the time and they actually bet on shit too even probably worse than what we could potentially do so why wouldn't we have a team there and and capitalize on this huge market that exists that we've never tapped into and i think that's because boxing never really did it for you know for them but the ufc showed hey you can take a major because that's let's just be honest the ufc is just a more it's not necessarily a sports league but it's just essentially like a major sports franchise basically at this point it's like a it's 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 like a high-end nfl team uh but they just happen to be their own thing so it's like oh yeah that market can support them so of course why wouldn't we have a football baseball basketball fucking hockey everything right why not so uh, it's it's interesting to see it's it's you know i think it's a good place to go and it's nice because you know it's close so like if we want to go we can you know once the bull train gets made as we were talking about on the other uh, podcast once the bull train gets made man we could just go and fucking jump on two hours and go see man I can't wait to go see the Golden Knights play it's fucking gonna be great and then whatever the fuck uh, baseball team I might have to become a trader and fucking become a new Las Vegas A's wait is, are, is that what they're gonna be called I don't know what's gonna happen if they're gonna be rebranded but uh, I don't <coughs> I really don't know at this point I don't know what's gonna happen with that team if I mean even the Sacramento A's does not have a nice ring to it no, it doesn't. Uh, I, I really think that they should just rebrand the, ne- the name and just be called something else like the, the, the Vegas. I don't know. A- any literally any other names. <laughs> the Vegas. Any other thing. That's what they should be called. Do you, you know those guys that uh, flap their porn cards, the porn baseball cards? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. They, they should make a. Uh, <laughs> they should make that the fucking team. <laughs> the guys that had out the fucking porn cards. Yeah, the, the ones that like flip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, that'd be hilarious. 
They should be called the Las Vegas porn stashes. <laughs> the Las Vegas strippers. And it won't be it, it won't be related to strippers at strip yeah. clubs. It'll be the strip itself. Yeah, like, the Las Vegas <laughs> strip. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. <clears throat> so, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. <clears throat> and just to just to quickly recap. Uh, so the Kings ended up getting their shit knocked in. Ah by the Oilers and I have to say uh they evidently looked like the better team. I I I am so disenfranchised by the three and out fucking situation between the Oilers. You can't even call it a rivalry at this point at this point. With the last three years, Kings have faced the Oilers. First time they did it, seven games lose. Following year, six games lose. And then you come to this season, five games lose. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking I'm picking the Oilers as the team that's going to end up winning the Stanley Cup. Yeah, I I really think out of the current lineup that's in the NHL playoff picture, I think that the Edmonton Oilers are probably going to actually take it. And I will say this. I like the Edmonton. I like them as a team. I think they're a pretty fucking decent. They're, they're the most decent and the pretty all rightest <laughs> fucking uh, hockey team. I am fucking. I don't know how the Golden Knights got like dropped so far. Uh, we had a, we had a two o two o lead coming back to Vegas, drop two, and then just dropped game three to the Stars back at home again. So now we're going into game six. And again, this is obviously a must win for the Golden Knights if they want to continue on the defending champions. And personally, I think that the Golden Knights are a much better hockey team than the Dallas Stars. I think just on paper, I think they're a much better team. I think they are are just a better team in general. And I don't know what the fuck's happening. I don't know what the fuck is going on. I don't know if they just gave up or if they're just fucking quitting if I'm watching it happen live. But if the Knights are out, I'm definitely going to be rooting for Edmonton to take it because I don't think that the Edmonton Oilers have actually ever won a Stanley Cup. I think that was some trivia that I saw the other day that they haven't won a, a, a proper Stanley Cup. If I feel like I feel like they were on that list. Maybe I'm wrong, though, but or maybe it's been like fucking many years. Or maybe I'm just an idiot. I don't know. Maybe I'm just an idiot. Could be. Could be a little bit of both. Uh, now now I'm going to check that because. You know. Um, baseball is my jam and i probably know more baseball than i do hockey i just yeah. follow my team and when it comes oh, to oh yeah that's right they, no I, I was wrong they, they haven't won it in like 30 fucking years which has been like 1990 i think was the last time they won it so what was that i mean that was Gret- i think Gretzky Gretzky was, era. yeah i think that was in the 80s was when he was on the oilers so i think that was yeah that's probably that's the gretzky area era yeah which uh, makes sense but it sucks ass that they haven't won it in 30 years, man. That sucks. Yeah, dude. I mean, Vancouver is like one of those teams that consistently make oh, the. F- yeah. Go, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Vancouver. I mean, when the Kings were cooking in the early 2010s, when they got their 2012 and 20, 2014 uh, Stanley Cups, man, Vancouver was one of those teams that were so good. And then when it came to the playoffs, I don't shit know what I, I don't know what happened, dude, but they always shit the bed when it comes to playoffs. And I actually don't know what the record is as far as their series go, but I'm sure they're going to shit the bed again. <laughs> More than likely, uh, that's who it was. I keep getting the Edmonton Oilers and the Vancouver Canucks confused. Yeah. But it's the Canucks who have never won a Stanley Cup. And they're always fucking... Good. They're the they're the oldest team in the league, along with the... It's the... the well, they I don't know if they're called the Sabres. Are they still... Do they still exist as the Sabres? The, I think they, they changed their name or something like that. I don't know. But... It's those two teams that have that are the oldest teams that have never won a Stanley Cup. Mm. And uh, I think the Sa- I think the Sabres, yeah, the Buffalo Sabres, didn't they change their name? No, they didn't. They're still the Buffalo Sabres. Um, fuck, man. I just, yeah, those two teams have never fucking won a Stanley Cup. And that's insane. Yeah. And uh, just to just to add on fucking Oilers, man, Dreisaitl and, and I think his name is Connor McDavid, dude. I don't know how it's possible to be so elegant and 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 so expeditious on the ice because I swear to God, dude, I was watching the games and it looked like the inverse ninja law where, you know, it's it's fucking Connor McDavid versus five kings and he's making them all look useless. Oh, yeah. And I was like, holy fuck, dude, this is ridiculous. So they're my pick to win the uh, the Stanley Cup. 
<clears throat> yeah, I, like I said, I, I agree with that. I think they're going to go all the way. And I will be, if if the Golden Knights are eliminated, I will be rooting for the Edmonton Oilers to take take the cup because I just enjoy watching playoff hockey because it's so good, man. It's yeah. There's nothing like it. Once you get past the first round, because yes, the first rounds have kind of, they're, they're kind of bad sometimes. But this, I will say this, uh, this Stars and uh, Golden Knights game, this one is the only series that, that was, that got 2-2, two, two, that was like tied up or whatever. Everybody else was like fucking going 4-0 or sweeping or going like 4-1 to one or whatever. So I, I do think this game is going to come down to a game seven. I think that, that the, the, the Knights are going to win this next game. I think it's on fucking today on Friday. And then I think they're going to go to game seven and that's who knows. It's going to be anybody's guess, but what's going to suck is I don't, I I don't think they're playing. They're not playing the Edmonton Oilers. They're going to play whoever the winner of the other series is. And they're going to be tired going into that because they're going to have played seven games. Whereas they've only played, I think five. So I don't know if that's going to affect the outcome, but it's definitely something that, is going to contribute. So anyways, you got anything else? No, that's pretty much it. All right, cool. Perfect. So yeah, well, good. We hit 90 minutes, so that's just, you know, good to go anyways. All right. Well, I didn't expect to talk about all that shit for baseball, fucking about my life for, <laughs> and sports about Corona high and all that shit, but that was fun. That was cool. I enjoyed it. And, uh, who knows? Maybe we should make the clip that thing talking about saying about Joe Kelly. Maybe he'll, he'll hear it and fucking want to come on. Maybe he'll, uh, he'll send me an email. You know what I have like, to say to that? Emails. What? <laughs> Oh, you don't think you know, you don't know, like that? <laughs> no, I just wanted I just wanted just to pass gas. Want to fart? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, that that was a you know what was in that fart? It was a hey Josh, that's a great idea. I think we should definitely do that. That's what I heard out of, out of that ass that that just happened. <laughs> that is probably not like that. That is a uh, probably one of the most. Oh man, this fucking thing I this this conch that we were using oh, to just throw out the window right now. At, at this point, it's been thrown out, and uh, I mean we were using it a good portion of this particular episode but at this point we're just we're, we're just talking nonsense but uh yeah dude farting on a podcast that probably doesn't make me look good but fuck it we, we do whatever we want yeah i agree we do whatever the fuck we want and no one tells us what to do that's what's great about this is not a single person tells us you can't do that hey you want to fart on a podcast hey man you really can't do that oh yeah he just did it go fuck yourself bottom line anyways all right well that's the end of it uh i don't know if all of our shits at the end of this one but whatever you heard it at the beginning go follow us at gameragemagazine.com go listen to all other fucking podcasts you know do whatever eh, whatever do whatever you want i'm not your boss all right just just fucking just do whatever but if you want to listen to some shit while you're wasting away at work or f- whatever at least listen to us at least we're semi-entertaining you know you know what it feels like it's trying to lure a cat because it's a stray cat i feel that our audience is a bunch of fucking stray cats and we're trying to lure them with canned food and goods. And we're hoping that we can bring one home and, and take care of and give a, give them a forever home. And I'm getting very tired waiting to pick it, pick up with this goddamn cat. You know, I wonder if I used up all my cat luck by getting this fucking cat and now we're not going to get any more stray cats, but whatever it is what it is. Uh, I do imagine our audience just being a bunch of actual stray cats with headphones just fucking <laughs> listening to us. They're all just sitting there just meowing and Dodgers. It's Shohei Otani. <laughs> so that's awesome. We should make a fuck. That should be like a fucking shirt. It's just a cat with headphones. From the pine. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyways, that's it. Where's, where's the fucking goddamn outro music? Uh, it's on this page. Anyways, yeah, so thanks for listening, and uh, yeah, we'll catch you on the next one. That was Chirpin' from the Pine, the Game Rage Sports Podcast. You can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Game Rage Magazine. Follow us on X at Game Rage Mag. You can go to our website, www.gameragemagazine.com.